Although I reach out with one hand for the new in technology, I never let go of the old, and I believe that both have their place, and in fact, maybe the, the real question is how to have one foot in the past and one foot in the future and somehow bring that together, and that's the present. Here we are in Rome, and we go over to the Vatican and say, Michelangelo, you know, come on over, we're going to show you some things. And, or if Goethe could come here, or uh, Leonardo, and see what is now possible, what tools those people would get all excited because they discovered a new way to make yellow. Well, here we have something like that multiplied by a billion and say, here, it's yours, come in, use it, do whatever you want. That, that doesn't mean to say that we love technology more than we love the real backbone of art, which is human passion, uh, philosophy, learning, uh, emotion. Those, those are the things that we wish to get at, but we've always used technology, even when it was a caveman scratching on some beast he saw on the wall. He used technology. Technology is a servant, it's not a master. Help me if you can, for God's sake. Edie, I'd like to help. I'd like to help, but there's nothing I can do. All right. I shouldn't have asked you. Believe me, I swear to God, Evie. Half of the films made in America between the turn of the century and 1951 do not exist in any form. About 80% of the features made in the 20s are also lost entirely. The fact is that films are an endangered species. Besides having the largest film and television archive in the world, the library operates the nation's only full-time black and white nitrate conversion laboratory. Ironically, it's often the most popular films of the time that are in most danger of long-term destruction. We all have this idea that when you say, oh, your negative's in the vault, you have this idea that it's in heaven, you know, so that nothing could possibly happen to it. But in fact, those films are sitting in cans, and those cans uh, have to be protected against moisture and, and the, other, uh, the other deteriorating forces and you think of all the negatives that are sitting and uh, original materials and tape materials now that are sitting in vaults, they're sort of out of sight, out of mind. The future uh, uh, value of, of that material is very much uh, in the hands of uh, those dedicated people who fight for preservation. Many other films like Citizen Kane, King Kong, and Chaplin's earliest films will never be seen as they first appeared in theaters due to the loss of the original negative. The newly restored negatives of many classics reside in the library's cold vault where they will be preserved for future generations. I realize that the uh, Library of Congress, which is probably the major first step or one of the major first steps for such a repository to exist, realizes that one day due to the quite natural evolution of technology, which is to say the phone companies wiring up everybody with fiber optics, which is inevitable, that with that step comes much more than calling your grandmother on the phone. With that step comes the, really the first phase of a, of, a, uh, of a availability of all knowledge, all things, all art, all of the philosophical discussions, all of the films, all of the drawings, all of the recorded music, all of the performances, all going to exist in this vast vault of our common human culture, the real wealth of the human race. <laughs>